Okay, today's lesson, lesson 8.3, volume of a sphere. Okay, the key idea is that we're going to be calculating the volume, and it is the product of 4 thirds pi and the cube of the radius of the sphere. Now remember that all volume has to have a cubic unit, so there are three dimensions that are being multiplied. And so far, everything, we've taken the area of the base, and then times it by a measure of height. And so that's how we've gotten our cubed or our three dimensions. But in a sphere, think about that. There's no flat surfaces, so there's real no, no base, so to speak. So when, we, when we're doing the sphere, we need the radius squared. And then we're also going to use then the radius as that third dimension to get that measure of height. So in the first example in your textbook, we're going to find the volume and round to the tenth. So the radius is 4, so we will uh, cube the 4. And so you can kind of see what they're doing here. Now remember, um, in math, so when you take something times 4 thirds, obviously, yes, you could probably use a uh, fraction button on your calculator, but everything has a place, right? There's either the numerator or the denominator. And all numbers, even these right here, are over 1. So the pi and the radius cubed, if, if written as a fraction or as a ratio, would be over 1. So you would have 4 times pi times 4 cubed all over 3. And so that's kind of how they're getting um, this next part, this 256 divided by 3 pi. Sometimes we leave that pi out until the end, or sometimes we don't even multiply it in, depending on what we're working with. Um, so in this case, 256 times pi divided by 3 is equal to 268 point one cubic centimeters. Okay, and now we're going to have to find um, the radius. So we will be using the formula, okay, and at this step right here, now notice too that for the volume they give it to us in terms of pi. What that means is it's 288 times pi. They didn't multiply it in, okay, and in the end we're just going to cancel it out because um, we're finding the radius. So remember we talked about this 4 times pi divided by 3, right? All times the radius cubed. Remember the radius is over 1, okay? So the radius, when you think about what's happening to the radius, because it's the unknown value. So all of the things that we're going to undo, we're going to undo multiplying by 4 and multiplying by pi, which means we have to divide something by 4 pi. We're going to undo dividing by 3, which means we have to multiply by 3. And we did this a uh, long time ago, actually, I think in Chapter 1, when we solved uh, equations with rational coefficients where we had fractions, we multiplied by the reciprocal. So here you go. 3 over 4 pi is the reciprocal of 4 pi over 3. So we are multiplying both sides of the equation by that. The 4 and the pi will cancel, the 3's will cancel on the right-hand side. We are left with the radius cubed. Over here, when we are doing this, we are going to be taking 3, here, I'll bring it down here so you can kind of see, 3 times the 288 times the pi, and dividing that by 4 and the pi. So you can kind of see that the pi's will cancel. Um, you could multiply and then divide, or you could always look to see if um, 288, and I believe it is, 288 divided by 4. So 4 goes into itself once. So we're just doing some simplification here. And 72, 4 goes into 288 72 times. So 72 times 3 is this 216. But we're not done, okay? 216 is equal to the radius cubed. That, oops not a 3, okay, is equal to the radius cubed. That means the radius times the radius times the radius. So what number times itself three times? So we have to find the cube root of that. Okay, we've done this already. If you do not remember, you'll need to go back to the chapter and review it. But taking the cube root in, on your calculator as a function would be um, using the second feature and the zero takes the cube root. So when you have 216 in your calculator and you hit the second zero, you should get the answer of 6. And since it's a linear measurement, it's 6 inches for the answer. 
All right, so on your own, you're going to be doing this. So using the formula, volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r n cubed. Plug in what we know. Since the diameter is 18, the radius is 8. So pi, and then we have 8 cubed. So 4 thirds pi times 512. When I put this in my calculator, I would start with the radius and I would cube that. I would get 512, and in this case you could take it times pi, use the pi button, hit enter, times 4, hit enter, and divide by 3. So that we get approximately 2,100 44.7 feet cubed. Remember, we wanted to round to the tenths if necessary. Okay? Since we are given the volume, now we're going to be working backwards to find the radius. Starting with the formula, we could substitute in the 36 pi for the V, for the volume. And then we have 4 pi over 3 times the radius cubed, right? So this is the one that we are going to be getting rid of because that's how we're going to undo that. We, we were multiplying by 4 and pi, so we're going to have to divide by 4 and pi. We were dividing by 3, we'll have to multiply by 3. So we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal. So multiply by 3 over 4 pi. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, pi divided by pi is 1, 3 divided by 3 is pi. Do the same to this side of the equation. Multiply by 3 over 4 pi. So to rewrite it, you have 3 times 36 times pi all over 4 pi. The pi's will cancel, right? This will be equal to the radius cubed because we've isolated that variable now. Again, 4 and 36, pretty easy simplification to do here. And then this becomes mental math, 3 times 9. So if 27 is equal to the radius cubed, we know that if we take the cube root of both sides, we will get 3 meters equal to the radius. It's a linear measure, so there's only one unit dimension. We are going to be finding also the volume of some composite solids. So this um, silo is made up of a cylinder and a hemisphere, and a hemisphere is one half of a sphere. So in this case, we had to do some um, different things. One, um, we know that, let's see, what does it tell us? The top of the silo is a hemisphere with a radius of 12 feet. What is the volume round to the nearest thousands? So one thing that we do know that they give us the, the total height here from the top of the silo to the bottom of the silo. But, you know, we need to kind of cut it off right there to get this cylinder dimension of 40. And so if you think about that, that they gave us that the radius is equal to 12, right? Right there, 12 feet. So we would have to subtract 12 from 52. All right, so you might have to do that. You might have to subtract off, you know, part of your figure there. So we get a cylinder that has a height of 40 and a radius of 12, right, because it shared the same shape circular part. So the area of the base is pi r squared, or pi times 12 squared, times the height, which is 50. And again, not multiplying it by pi, you are leaving it in terms of pi, 5,760 pi. The hemisphere then becomes half of, here's that back factor of half, because it's half of the total volume of the sphere, and we get this amount, okay? When we add these together, they're like terms because of the pi, you could multiply the pi in and get about 22,000 cubic feet. So we will be doing some calculations similar to that. So we will have, um, find the volume of the composite solid. In three, we have a cylinder in the middle with a hemisphere on either side. So the cool part is we could take that, that each hemisphere off and make one full sphere. So that'll make our calculations a lot easier. But we also have to find 
the unit dimension of the height of this cylinder. So we know that from, you know, we can use the radius here to say that from the top, you know, center part of the cylinder to the outer edge is 2, and the same would be true going, oops, going the other way. Okay, so that we can then come up with a unit measure that is just the height of the cylinder. So if we take two off of each end from eight, we'll have four inches for the cylinder. So sometimes I like to, you know, just kind of like draw my shapes so I know and then label them. Now it shares the same, so it's going to have two for the radius there. So for a cylinder, I have pi r squared height. So pi, and then we have 2 squared times 4, and that equals about um, 50.3 inches cubed. And then the next thing that we have is the hemispheres on either side, right? So they kind of um, form. a full circular uh, sphere. So we'll have b is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then <clears throat> r, it, oops, r in this case is the 2 because it has the same radius. So 2 cubed is 8 times pi times 4 divided by 3 and we get 33 0.5 inches cubed. So the composite would be, when you add the two together, 83.8 inches cubed. Okay, in part four over here, we have a cone and a cylinder. So for the cylinder, we will have the volume equal to pi r squared h so pi, and then it shares the radius, so 3 squared times 9, and that's going to be 254.5, and our unit is meters cubed, and then our cone is one-third of pi r squared h, but it has a different height because we have to do the height of the cone, so one third pi has the same radius, three squared, and then times five, and that is going to be equal to 47.1 meters cubed. So if you add those together for the composite, you get 301.6 meters cubed.